Hey everyone, Richard here with thewirelesshaven.com. Today we're going to be going over the NEX P1 Geo router and how to update its firmware. Make sure you get whatever browser you like to use, preferably one that has a private or incognito tab. Power up your router and get connected to it. And load up the login web UI using its IP address 192.168.1.1 unless you've changed yours. Set, set that and it should log into there. You can also bookmark this for future use so that it's easier to get to. Once you're on the page, put in your password, click the login button or press enter. And the place that we need to be is under the system menu under backup slash flash firmware. We want to scroll down to the bottom under flash new firmware image. Click on the flash image button, and then we're going to click on the browse button. And you should have the firmware files downloaded in a place wherever you know that you're going to find them. If not, if you haven't already downloaded, navigate to our website at thewirelesshaven.com, open up the menu on the left side, and click on Wifix Router Firmware. On the page should have quick links to each of our router's firmwares. The NEX P1 GO is right in the middle. And it'll take you right to a download page. Download that again to an appropriate place where you will remember it. Once it's completely downloaded, you can go back to the upload page. And you'll notice here that you downloaded a zip file. We can't use that for the firmware update. So what we're going to need to do is extract that with whatever tools you have on your computer to the location wherever you need to use it and jump into the main folder to find the actual file that we use. It's a .bin file. Depending on your firmware version at the time that you are updating yours, this is the September 11th edition of the NEX P1 Geo firmware. Go ahead and click open and that's going to set it up. And then you have to click on upload to actually upload it to the router. Doesn't take very long to do. We're not speeding this up at all. Once it's uploading and finished, it'll switch to verify and then it'll show you this little screen here to make sure. Now there's a checkbox here that says keep settings and retain the current configuration. We do not recommend this. Make sure that little checkbox is unchecked. The reason is sometimes some weird things get left over from the previous settings. Click on continue and it will begin flashing the firmware. Now, the firmware file is on the router, but you still don't want to power off the router. Technically, you can unplug the Ethernet cable from it while you're doing this, but you don't want to power it down. Now, once it's done, you should be able to reload the page to the router using the same address and even just refresh if it takes too long. Now, that process we cut about three or four minutes out of the video it may take longer you may see a screen like this that says the site can't be reached or even after you do see the screen and you try to log in you might see this again and it'll say something like this your connection was interrupted and so forth and what's happening is your router is rebooting setting its settings it might even reboot once or twice and if anything it's also resetting its interface to your pc so your pc is seeing pc mac whatever you're using it's seeing the connection being reset. Eventually, it should come back. This whole process to get to logging in could take upwards of 10 minutes. Just have to be patient. Once it actually does come back completely, you can go ahead and log in. Now, it's been reset, so the password shouldn't matter, but you can enter it. It just doesn't really matter because it's gone. We've reloaded the firmware when we did not save our settings. But since there is no password saved at all, you can, you can log in with it. And you see here, we all, we, once again, we had our connection interrupted because the router is still doing changes after it's loaded the new firmware. Eventually it will come back and you'll see here that there is no password set. And you'll also notice that we have the correct date of the firmware. Our firmware by Wifix is made by Golden Orb. It's Golden Orb based firmware. And you'll see again, no password set. One thing that we want to check after we've loaded the firmware in our settings 
is going to be in, under Network Interfaces. With this new version, it's an OpenWRT 21 based firmware. They've changed the way these interfaces work. So you're going to see that this thing comes up. Configuration, migration, existing need to be changed. Press continue here. And that will allow the router to make these changes that, that need to be applied for these configurations for this new firmware. Shouldn't take very long to do. Once you click apply, configuration is now changed. And then you'll see your interfaces pop up like this. Under wireless, again, with this new firmware, you'll notice that the first time you load up here, it's not going to show any of your settings here. Wireless disassociated, device not active. This means that your Wi-Fi is not on. We need to reboot the router. So if you head to System Reboot and click on the button that says Perform Reboot, allow the device to do its thing. And this may take a few minutes. It may or may not take a long time. You may or may not have to reload the page, but it'll take a little bit of time. Let the router do its thing. And once it comes back, we'll be able to check our settings and see that we did have a successful completion of our firmware flash. Again, there is no password. We haven't set it yet. So you can actually do nothing and just click login and it will work. You see here, no password set. We're going to go back down to the network settings under interface. And you'll notice that no pop-up comes up. There's all our interfaces. Head over to wireless and you'll see that all of our Wi-Fi settings are now there. It shows our channel names. It shows our channel. You'll see here the SSID for the 5G and the 2.4G. And you'll see here 2.462 gigahertz and the SSID for that one. And the SSID for 5.2 gigahertz. The edit settings for each SSID is in line with which one you want to use. 5.2 gigahertz there. And the 2.4 gigahertz is in line with its SSID. Clicking edit. Click save and apply after making any changes. Make sure you check out our website over at thewirelesshaven.com. We have all of these routers, modems to upgrade if you want, outdoor antennas, cables, and all the products you need to get connected online. This has been Richard with thewirelesshaven.com.